great idea. I've just picked up a shock tower notching kit from Revelation Race Supplies. And today I'm going to show you how to make enough room in the engine bay of your early Ford to fit just about any V8 or Turbo 6 you like. This XK Falcon has a 351 Cleveland fitted and the kit gives a big engine like this plenty of room. But it also gives you a lot more room so that you can ditch a restrictive old manifold like this and replace it with a header with good airflow and you can get a massive horsepower gain. And you get a stronger chassis. Now today's project is a 64 Falcon, clearly in the bodywork stage. Revelation Race Supplies make these kits to fit just about every Ford from the 60s, including Mustangs from 1964 and a half through to 1970, and Falcons from 1960 right through to 85. Now you do have to remove the engine to install one of these kits, not necessarily to this stage though, and it sure helps to have your car on a rotisserie. First step is to cut out the paper templates along the mark line using scissors. Put them aside and double check your engine bay is well prepared. Clear any fixtures you might hit with the grinder or plasma cutter and check just generally that anything you don't want to cut isn't cut. Next, take your cut out templates left with left, right with right and lay each over the two suspension towers lining up the holes in the paper with the bolt holes of the car. Apply masking tape to the template to secure paper to the tower and sheet metal surrounds. Now take a permanent marker and follow the edge of the template. The reason we use a paper template is because at the time of original manufacture, the pressings can vary a bit, so really no two cars are the same. Now the guys at Revelation Race Supplies have really thought about this to make it as easy an installation as possible. In fact, most of the prefabrication is already done for you. All you need to do is mark, cut, weld and finish it off. So if you take your time with a 4 inch angle grinder or a plasma cutter and you're a reasonable hand with a MIG welder or a TIG welder, you'll nail this job. But before you cut anything, check with a local traffic engineer to make sure a conversion like this is legal in your state. Next step, safety first. Gloves, safety glasses, earmuffs, and then using either a grinder with a thin cut-off wheel or a plasma cutter if you've got one, cut around your marked line, but about 10 millimeters inside the line. Don't cut past the line. And remember, as with any job, the more accurately you work, the better the finished job will be. Take the fabricated plate and sit it on your cut tower. Check the fit and then clean up the hole you've just made to allow for a neat butter joint with the RRS plate. The plate should overlap the created aperture easily. After you're happy with your cut, clamp the RRS plate in place and tack weld from inside the suspension side every 30 to 50 millimeters. Once the inside edge is tacked in, completely weld the plate from inside the suspension side ensuring that you get good weld penetration. What you're looking for is slight evidence of melt through. Now it's time to work on the engine bay side. Take your grinder or plasma cutter and trim off the excess plate overlapping the edges of the tower and weld on the supplied reinforcement plates along the center line of the new tower piece. Once they're tacked in place, then finally zip them up and finish weld the entire plate. Finally, clean up your edges with a grinder and prime as desired. There we go, that's one shock tower notching kit done. If only Ford had thought of that in the first place. Now Revelation Race Supplies have been making retro tech products for Fords for over 25 years. And this is just one of their great ideas. But for me, I can't wait to drop that engine in.